Hi everyone, so um, I just wanted to have a little bit of a life update or something like that. So in my previous vlog, I talked about problems that, you know, happened with my daddy, the hospital and all these things. And I just wanted to let you know that he's doing well. He came back um, a couple days ago, he came back home and he responded pretty well to the antibiotics and everything. Um, which of course I'm very, very happy about. Um, his heart is still kind of permanently damaged and, you know, there's some there's some chance that he might have more heart problems, problems later on, but, you know, I'm just, I'm very relieved, you know, the, the feeling is, is very immense, the, the feeling of relief. And regarding my, um, my ankle sprain, um, I'm actually doing pretty well, let me show you, um, I have one of these, yeah, I mean, I have, I pretty much feel no pain anymore at all, except for sometimes when I kind of step on it kind of strangely, or if I press too much on the, where, you know, where the sprain actually happened or something like that. But I can walk perfectly fine, and it was only two weeks, um, which is, of course, because it was a very mild sprain. Um, yeah, I was told that I could have been healing still for three weeks which i guess is still the case because i'm not completely healed i can kind of feel that i'm not completely healed but um i'm doing very well and i can do everything that i wasn't able to really do that well some days ago or maybe like five days ago um so yeah it's all do it's all going very well i'm very happy with what's going on and yeah So the rest of my um, pads, my menstrual pads for I arrived today, um, now I have six of these. So that's great, we have a, we have some stickers too, she gave me some stickers with the order. Um, she gave me, well, the pack is made of this large one for nocturnal use, the regular and the panty liner. So they're all very cute and I'm so glad I got them. Um, hi everyone, how are you? So I'm just using the last bit of natural light that I have left. So I started listening to this album some probably a week ago already or more. Um, it's called everywhere at the end of time and if you have listened to it or you have heard of it you probably know what kind of the problem is and I'm just ever since I heard those that first song and really that first album um, those notes those first notes just keep repeating in my head over and over and the first day that I listened to that um, well I didn't I listened to the first album I think in one day or maybe the first half of the first album um, the stage stage one and ever since I listened to that one, the first notes, the first couple notes just keep repeating over and over in my head. And I, that night, I couldn't, I, I mean, I could sleep, but it took me a long time and I kept waking up several times throughout the night. Um, and I kept, those notes just kept repeating in my head. Um, and I had heard, I had seen some warnings telling people to not listen to the albums if they were like in a bad place emotionally, mentally or whatever. And I don't know, I, I feel like that's kind of subjective to, to say whether or not you're in a bad place. I mean, I feel like I'm, even though I do have like those issues, you know, mental illness or whatever, I feel like I'm doing pretty well at the moment. Um, not exactly asymptomatic, but, you know, I'm doing well for the moment, so. And, you know, I was obviously very curious um, about what it sounded like and what it was like, you know. So I listened to it. And at first I was 
since I was so like shocked by it or I just like freaked out and I, I you know it, it was a kind of a strange feeling because it's more sad than anything else but for some reason I find it scary even though it's most things I think I have said it before most horror things to me are more sad um, or angering rather than scary and for some reason this album is more scary than sad even though the context and everything else is is supposed to be sad I guess rather than scary but I find it really scary I mean audio wise it is scary by itself I do feel the way that the music is made to sound and the way that it's kind of like modified and stuff I remember that video where I was talking about uh, Geek the Girl by Lisa Germano and that was kind of like the first song that I listened to that I could call scary but this is definitely like a scary type of music that I I can find and it's not just the context because I know some people say that the context is really the only thing that makes it so scary and I do feel like it takes a great part in why people find it scary but I personally think that the sound itself is kind of doing a pretty good job especially because of the way that it calls kind of back to itself and you know that it's it's kind of evident that it's about kind of reality distorting or you know, reality getting distorted in your mind and stuff like that. Even if you know you don't know that it's specifically about dementia, you kind of do get a sense of it being about like losing touch with reality. And that's kind of the scary part about that kind of stuff. I remember when I was first getting symptoms of agoraphobia, I was getting the most extreme symptoms or you know, I was getting so, or so I was getting this sort of like narrowing of the places where I felt fine. Um and there was time where the only place where I felt okay was here in my bedroom and everywhere else, even in my own house, I was like really, um, I was really anxious so all the time. And I remember at around that time, I was scared that I was going to go insane. And it's a real fear. I mean, I had never felt that fear until that one day where I realized how extreme my symptoms were getting. And I don't know, it's it's something that you don't quite realize how scary that is until you start to sort of like really get that close to it. And I guess part of the reason why those albums are so scary for people is because they haven't experienced dementia. Um, and of course, that's part of the reason why it's so scary for me. Because of course, I don't know what dementia is really like. And of course, the fact that it's art, obviously, to some degree, things have to be sort of, sort of like distorted or exaggerated to some degree to seem more you know, effective or impactful for the sake of art. But at the same time, I do feel like it reminds me of feelings that I had in the, in ter in the sense of, you know, or, or rather feelings or experiences that I was sort of expecting to have if I were ever to lose touch with reality to that degree, to the degree of um, late stage dementia or something like that. So I did find it pretty impactful for me. Um, I think that's partly why I it kind of affected my sleep so much. Um, and I know it might seem paradoxical that I keep listening to it because I'm actually on stage, late stage 5 right now. Um, and I have gotten pretty creeped out by it. And it might seem paradoxical that I keep listening to it. Because why would you want to listen to something or why would you want to keep your, exposing yourself to stuff that's creeping you out? But at the same time, I feel like there's some... When you know all that there is to know about something that's scaring you, I feel like it becomes less scary because... It's kind of like in a horror movie where the scariest part is often, oftentimes is before the the monster or the villain is revealed or the sort of main um, you know phenomenon that there that is affecting people or whatever. Um, before you know what's actually going on, that's kind of like the scariest part usually. Um, everything else after that is tense and all that, but it's not as scary as the beginning where you don't understand what's going on so I feel like to some degree understanding more about it and reading and knowing more about it is also like a little bit um you're kind of like making peace with it in a way to like to understand it more because again sometimes when you know things better um it kind of helps you demystify them and um it makes them less scary of course I don't think that you should expose yourself to things that you know are going to like damage you but I feel like it's a different thing I mean I don't for example I don't watch um like gore videos or you know lively kind of stuff because I know that's going to really affect me and kind of like really ruin my day you know um so I avoid them you know but these kind of albums especially when it comes to fictional stuff I feel like 
like it's a bit different like that's a bit of a healthier way to um to deal with your fears and to deal with your your feelings or with your experiences um so i think it's a good idea and i'm not sure but i i think i might be planning to film or vlog some of my some of my um, reactions towards the last stage of the album. I felt like six hours was so long before I actually listened to it and now I'm like yeah I mean I, I guess it is very long but a lot of stuff happens you know in those six hours well and in the five hours or so that I have listened to at the time um, at this time so yeah if you have listened to those, those albums um, tell me what you think about them because yeah, they're pretty interesting. There's something to be discussed, definitely. Hi everyone, so I'm just gonna talk a little bit about what my final thoughts or closing thoughts on Everywhere at the End of Time are. So I finished listening to it. Um, I've only listened to it once, but I have gone to re-listen to some of the parts, uh, some of the parts on each stage a little bit um, to sort of refill the things that I felt the first time and it's still just as scary I feel I mean I still I feel like I did kind of I don't know I feel like there's some lot of some degree of weight that I took of myself by listening to the whole thing because I think a part of me was kind of expecting it to be worse than it really was not in terms of quality of course but in terms of like how scary it would be and how much it would like affect me emotionally um, and it did, I mean, it did affect me quite a lot. But I also feel like part of the fear for me was like this anticipation for what the end ending would be like and what the next stages would be like and all that stuff. Um, and like I said in the previous shot, I guess, um, kind of the anticipation and the unknown is part of the fear, you know? And I still feel like I keep replaying some of the notes and some of the songs keep or other parts of the song some of the distorted portions and some of the more clear uh, portions and the hell sirens and the ending choir beat just kind of keep repeating and I keep thinking of the sort of like the concept and why it's so scary to me and all these things and of course you know I've always had this fear of death and all that um, and also like I mentioned the, the fear of going insane and I think that I've always had this sort of strong aversion to people who seem to be insane or who seem to be mentally ill in public um, or people who are just kind of like methed out or, you know, something like that. Um, anyone who seems kind of like, you know, uh, unhinged, I guess, to me in public, you know, in public spaces, um, ironically, has been kind of, I've been kind of almost afraid of those people for a long time. Um, and I haven't, well, I did once... Um, when I was in high school, um, I took social work, so I did go to a nursing home as part of a project for a while, and I was there um, a couple of times, um, I think once a week or so for a couple of months, and I did notice how some of the people were very obviously, you know, those people had dementia, um, and some of them kind of recognized you by another name, um, and one of them, one of those women, um, you know, the old ladies in the nursing home kind of took me from by the hand and she was like hey let's go take a walk for a by the their nursing home you know and I was like okay fine I mean because I, I had been told already by um by our teacher she told us that you know if you interacted with someone with dementia especially more advanced dementia like that um you should generally tell them like yes you know you should um not like contradict them or try to argue with them because there's nothing to argue about you know there's nothing to to be clarified you know there, there's no there's nothing to argue about this woman took me by the hand by some of the from to some of the parts of the nursing home which was pretty small really but i was there for a little while and also a little bit almost like scared of her i remember being a little bit afraid of her and i think in a way we we're all to i think we we're all to some degree afraid of insanity or afraid of losing you know, are, you're losing touch with reality. And I think our fear, you know, I don't want to project myself on other people, but I'm sure I'm not the only person who's had this like slight fear of, or aversion towards people who have some sort of like really severe uh, mental illness or something like that. Um, and I think that, you know, it's not just our fear, it's our fear of, of going insane. And I think it's also our fear of death. Um, 
which is why we might want to avoid um, older people specifically because they remind us of death, you know, and of our own mortality. Just to clarify, I'm not saying that it's fine to have these prejudices against uh, old people or people that you might consider to be um, mentally ill or that you might see as unhinged or anything like that. I'm mentioning it more because I think it's related to my reaction towards the album or these albums and because I just think that it's something that is sometimes healthy to admit to oneself if you do have some sort of aversion or fear. So I do feel a bit more at ease after finishing the whole albums, the whole compilation of albums, but I also feel like there's things that I still have to think through, you know, like there's things that I still haven't really made that, that clear for myself. It took me such a long time to finish the compilation in the first place because I, I was so like scared of the whole thing that I could only watch it at, at daytime. Um, and I was constantly, some of the, the, the stages, especially the later ones, you know, stages like three, well, since stage three, I kind of felt like I couldn't really stand it and I had I was constantly looking to the door because I felt like somebody was watching me and it was kind of scary in a way I don't know why but even though it's kind of like supposed to be sad like I said it, to me I found it more unsettling than anything else and I do understand that the last stage is supposed to be this sort of like freeing thing you know because death is the only thing that can to this day that can cure dementia if you will um, and it's almost like, I think it's a bit sad, of course, but it's a, it's kind of healthy in a way sometimes to think of death as something freeing too, as something that, you know, when there's no other choice or when there, that's the only thing that could end your suffering, then death is, becomes more of a peaceful idea rather than this really horrible, sad one. But of course, the ideal thing would be to never develop dementia in the first place. Um, but once it's been developing, it's been progressing, then, you know, the release, I guess, death is sort of a release for the patient and maybe to some degree for the people around them who, you know, are obviously also very really distressed by this person who is not really behaving how they used to behave and who sometimes don't even recognize them and people who might act kind of aggressively towards you when you really you think that they should feel more familiarity towards you because they know you but they don't at the same time they don't anymore and you know that's that's kind of the experience i guess that um, people fear the kind of experiences that people feel when they talk when they think about dementia but i have to say as well that i feel like not everything is as horrible and hopeless as it's probably made out to be because again it's an artistic project and sometimes things are sort of like exaggerated or so things are made to be more dramatic than they really are for the sake of you know an art project or fiction or what have you and in this case I do have to say that I have the more I find out about the dementia itself without the context of everywhere at the end of time the more it doesn't seem so horrible and so hopeless um, because of course people do have often have these you know moments of lucidity and moments that they might feel happiness even if they're kind of confused or moments where people are um, still re still are able to sometimes suddenly recognize people that they know be they've known before and I feel like maybe Elm gives you this really bleak view that's kind of devoid of the I guess good parts or the not so horrible parts of the of the disease and how it progresses and I do think it's it's kind of a horror project you know at the end of it all I think that it's kind of made meant to elicit these feelings that of melancholy but also fear fear of you know losing your yourself your identity feel of uh, fear of losing touch with reality fear of death and all those things um and i think it's based you know m mainly it is based on very real things of course but to some degree i think i also have to constantly remind myself that you know these audios and images and all these things um they're not necessarily the way that things actually go when one person the, you know were to develop dementia in real life that kind of keeps me grounded um when i think about it and i kind of like really start to scare myself more and more um so um i didn't want to end on too much of a downer note 
and I decided that I would show you a little bit of a haul, you know. I have some products here that I bought, some of them a while ago and some of them um, a bit more recently. I have been using these Good Molecules um, BHA Clarified Gel Cream for a while, uh, especially on these parts where I get some acne randomly, especially, um, you know, in terms of near the uh, beginning of my cycle and all that. This seems to work fairly well, um, short term I guess, but I do, I do still struggle with those patches, but they're definitely not as um, as strong as they are, as they were before I started using this product. Um, and this is the box that it came in. It has the ingredients here, and this is the name of the product. Good Molecules is a pretty cheap type of brand. I haven't used this yet, but this is the Hydrate and Cleanse Bar, a solid bar that I figured that I could use for, for a second part of my um, zero waste product kind of thing, although it does come in a plastic thing itself, but it's just a solid face cleanser and I'm still working on finishing up one of my cleansers, so um, I, haven't, I'm not, I haven't started using this one. This is actually another cleanser. Um, this is called the okay, the Instant Cleansing Balm, um, again by Good Molecules. I'm very interested in how it's going to work. Let me show you the actual product. This is what the product actually looks like. As you can see, it's just a jar. Uh, very cute. You know, just a jar. And I also have some Korean beauty kind of things. Um, I have this Yes I Am toner by Yumiso, which I got to use kind of on the bottom of my nose where it gets really dry sometimes um, and of course AHAs are meant for dry patches of skin from what I know and this is the box that it comes in and it's very cute and it, the other side actually has this sort of map of different routes in Seoul. Here it actually tells you like a couple of Korean phrases that you can use if you're lost. This is by G9 Skin. You can see. This is a sunscreen by G9 Skin. It looks like this. It's called White in Milk Sun. Uh, so you can see it has some Korean writing there and it's supposed to be SPF 50 plus which is my preference. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to have much product. Um, when I look at it, sort of like in front of the sun, it seems to have like half of this, about this much product inside. So I get the feeling it won't last very long, but you know, whatever. Um, it might be a very good product anyway, and it wasn't too expensive either, so you know, we'll see. I've shown this product before, but this is the Kiss Me or Isehan Japan um, Heroin Make Mascara. Uh, this is the black one, I think it's just black or brown, the Hair and Bake Volume and Curl Mascara. It really holds a curl pretty well and it just darkens the lashes. Not sure that it lengthens much again, but it's obviously supposed to be more volumizing. This is also by the same brand. Um, as you can see, this is supposed to be like a waterproof um, pencil liner. This is a twist up pencil liner. so. I bought it mostly for my to use on my upper waterline so that the liner on the top can look a bit more blended but I didn't use it today. This is a liquid liner so you know a felt tip liner I think or a brush tip um, to use on the you know top like this one and this brand in general seems to be very well liked and very accessible in East Asia or at least in Japan I think.